Today I'm going to teach you how to make my Ladybug number recognition game. It's going to be a tabletop manipulative game that you can use in your centers for your children to count out the number on the card and then match the correct number of buttons to it. What you're going to need to complete this is 12 lined or unlined index cards. You're going to need 12 sheets of red construction paper. If you don't have red construction paper, then you'll have to color your ladybugs. You'll need a ladybug pattern for my website. You'll need the dotted and numbered pattern from the website as well, nothingbutpreschool.com. You're going to need 78 buttons. Um, any dark colored button will do. So 78 of them. You're going to need one quart size and one gallon size zip top bag. You will need either a laminating machine or otherwise you'll need You're going to take your paper. ladybug pattern that you have printed out from the website and you're going to photocopy it onto your 12 pieces of red construction paper. Again, if you don't have the red construction paper, you're welcome just to print off 12 of the copies and then color them red. And you, of course, have just the one copy of the numbered and dotted cards as well. What you're going to do with the numbered and dotted cards is you're going to cut each one apart. So. Just go ahead and follow the line and you're going to cut out each individual number and then you're going to take your index card and you're going to glue it right into the middle of the then, index card. What you're going to do is you're going to take your ladybug patterns that you had created here and you can either, what I would do is just take and put it into a sheet of laminating paper. Then run it through the laminator, or if you don't have a laminator, contact paper. At least something to protect it, so um, if you have dirty hands, it'll stick. It'll stay much better than where you would be if you didn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my laminator, and then I'm gonna run these through. You're also gonna want to laminate your cards as well. Um, just go ahead and stick them in a pouch as well and then make sure that you have some spacing between each one of them because when you cut around them because if you cut right directly on it when you're done laminating it'll just take your lamination off. Again if you don't have a laminating machine feel free to put contact paper on both sides it's just to protect the cards. Now I'm ready to start because the laminator is warmed up. Um, you just always have to wait for that green go button and then you can insert the object right into the carrier here um, which is this white thing and then go ahead and guide the carrier into the machine um, in the direction of the feed arrow which was up on the top there um, just how it gets caught by the rollers and then you can go ahead and let it go down um, you're just going to allow the carrier to um, cool down after it comes completely out and then of course if you're trimming to size you have to leave about a three millimeter um, spacing of the lamination on the edges otherwise you'll just cut it apart so as soon as this is out I'll feed another one through um, I'll end up doing all my cards all my ladybugs and then we're going to go ahead and cut them apart as you notice the ladybugs can be trimmed very very close all the way around because it was a full sheet so you can just go ahead and trim them all the way around you don't have to leave any spacing that's fine um, your cards on the other hand are a different story because they're individual pieced in here what we need to do is leave that three millimeter border around each one of our cards so when you go ahead and cut just be sure that you're going to leave a border around each one of your cards because if you do not the lamination will just pull right off. If you get too close there's like a little if you 
hold it up real close to you, you can see right where that seal portion is. You don't want to cross that. If you do, um, your cards will not hold up. They'll just come right apart. Your lamination will fall off and all the work that you've just done will not do you any justice. So go ahead and just trim around all of your cards. And when you're finished with the each one of the cards, they turn out like th this here. So they're just nice and they're nice. They're actually like a hard lamination. That's what I like about the heat laminations. Um, then in order to play this game, what you would do is all the cards would be face down, like this. So in this case, it would be the line side. Um, if you're playing with one, if one child was playing, ladybugs would be all laid out on the table. Um, they can also play a two player if you'd like to. Um, then what you're going to have the child do is pick one card and flip it over. And in this case, I got the number three. Then you're going to take three of the child would take three buttons and it'd be one, two, three. So your pile would be up there and your card could be here. And when the teacher came by, they at the very end you could you can say, Oh yes, you did this correctly. If they played two player, the child sitting across from them would be able to go ahead and count up their buttons. Um, one of the reasons that I use the number three plus the dots is because if the child does not recognize the number three, they could count the number of the dots. One, two, three. And then they would also recognize that is the number three. So it does tend to lead for both reasonings. So you just take your bag and you put in all your ladybugs and all of your cards would be rubber banded together and they would go into they would go into your bag too so they'd all be in there and all of your buttons would be in your smaller zip top bag so they just go ahead and store them all inside so when they were finished with the they'd seal it up so all the buttons would stay in there and they could just put it all into one nice kit like this in the bag. And if you would like, if you wanted to put a hole punch in the middle right here, you can then hang them on hooks in your classroom. Otherwise, this whole thing would store very nicely inside of a file folder system where you just have the file folders and you can put the whole thing right inside. So um, if, you'd like to make, if you'd like to make this as well, you can go to my website, which again is nothingbutpreschool.com, and I will have the pattern on the website. It's a free pattern. You don't have to pay for it. Um, just look on the left-hand side of the site um, under the categories. The fifth one down is called File Folders, um, Games, and Centers. And just go ahead and click on there, and then you'll find one that says Tabletop Counting Manipulative Game um, Dash Ladybug, and that would be this particular game. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.